Hello everyone, in today's video I do some work on the 3D printed Skyline body in preparation for painting, I design some wheels in Fusion 360, and I make a rear diffuser and tailpipe using styrene. This week I've been able to make a lot of progress on various projects, including the R34 Skyline build, which is what I'll be showcasing in today's video. I first introduced this project last week when I 3D printed the Skyline body. The main body piece is made from PLA plastic and was printed on an FDM 3D printer, and the bumper and hood pieces were printed using an SLA printer. All the parts turned out really well, so I wanted to work on sanding and priming the body pieces so that the surface would be as smooth as possible and ready for paint. Before sanding the body piece, I wanted to use a knife to deepen the very faint panel lines around the trunk and taillight areas of the body. I figured a hot knife would be perfect for this, but I didn't have one on hand, however I did have a candle and an X-Acto knife. With the blade hot, it went through the PLA like butter and made carving the panel lines effortless. It would look even better with an actual hot knife since the temperature would be more consistent, allowing for the panel lines to look a lot cleaner, however this technique got the job done and the candle smelled nice. The soot makes the area look ugly right now, but once I get the primer on, you'll see that the panel lines turned out pretty nice. Next thing I did was sand the entire body. I started with some coarse grit sandpaper and began sanding spots that needed the most smoothing, including the roof and trunk areas. The SLA printed parts didn't require nearly as much sanding, so I just used some finer grit sandpaper on those surfaces. I also sanded around the hood so that it would fit well on the body. The biggest thing I wanted to be careful of when sanding was to make sure I didn't remove any details from the surface. I forgot to add a fuel filler door during the design process, so I added one with a knife. With everything sanded and now much smoother than what it was before, I was ready to apply several coats of primer. I applied the coats of primer quite thick to provide as much additional smoothing as possible. After applying around four coats, I noticed some spots where I wanted to do some additional sanding, as well as I wanted to make the panel lines that I engraved a bit deeper since they were getting covered by the coats of primer. Already the body is starting to look really nice, and much smoother than it did before. I wanted to once again focus on the roof and trunk pieces, which I sanded using some coarse grit sandpaper. I also used a little bit of filler to fix a spot on the front bumper. With everything sanded, I was once again ready to apply more coats of primer to make the body as smooth as possible without losing too much detail. Between coats of primer, I wanted to design some wheels for the car. I got a lot of comments and messages from people who are interested in seeing some of the more technical aspects of a build, such as the design process that goes into making these custom parts. A couple weeks ago I showed the process I used to make a custom battery mount for the pre-runner build and a lot of people really liked that I showed and explained the CAD work that I did to create it and wanted to see more. Initially when I started making videos I figured not many people would be interested in the design process, however it turns out that many of you are, which I think is awesome. I thought showing how I designed the wheels would be a nice thing to include in the video since I know that there are a lot of you out there with 3D printers who would like to design and print your own wheels. As I said in the last video where I showed some CAD work, this is by no means meant to be a follow along, step by step tutorial or anything like that. I'm just showing you the process I used and my thought process throughout the design, hopefully to give you some ideas. 
My workflow is certainly a bit messy throughout the design process since I was just messing around and experimenting a bit. I certainly don't make a habit of this when working on more formal projects. I'm once again using Autodesk Fusion 360 to design these parts. A lot of people ask me what software I use and what software I recommend. Fusion 360 is one program that I use often and highly recommend. I wanted to try and keep the design process as simple as possible so those of you watching who want to design your own wheels can hopefully get a bit of inspiration and some ideas from what I'm doing here. There's a lot of different ways you could go about designing a wheel. I started with one sketch using this image as a reference to mark where I wanted to make all the extrusions. Having good reference images definitely helps. I wasn't overly concerned about how accurate this particular wheel is since I was just testing out this process and trying to get some ideas on what would be a good way to go about the design with Infusion. One thing I didn't notice until after designing the part is that the spokes of this particular wheel, which I believe is a Method 601, aren't straight. They're actually curved, which I didn't notice until having a closer look at the reference image. So it makes this model a little less accurate. I should have made this profile here curved instead of just a straight line, but it won't be that hard to go back and make some corrections. I noticed from the reference image that the slots between the spokes had a little bit of a taper to it, so in order to recreate that in my design, I projected the pattern onto an offset plane and offset the sketch profile to make it a little bit smaller, and as you'll see in just a bit, I used a loft command to cut the openings. It's a minor thing, I could have just cut the slot straight through without any taper, but it adds a little bit of detail to the wheel and makes it a little more accurate. For the center section of the wheel, I once again created an offset plane and projected the sketch elements onto that plane, and extruded from that sketch. At this point I was happy with the design of the wheel, I just went ahead and added the lug nuts. The design ended up turning out pretty nice, but like I said before, the spokes should have been curved instead of straight like I made them, and maybe the center should be a little bit deeper if I really wanted to make the design as close to the real thing as possible. But after this design, I was ready to start the wheels that I'm going to be using on the Skyline. I used a very similar design process to how I designed the previous wheel, this time I wanted to make the design more accurate. Once again I started with a reference image and began tracing the details onto a sketch plane. After completing the sketch, I began extruding the outer rim and moved on to the spokes. For anyone who is unfamiliar with Fusion 360 and would like to learn more about it, I'll include links to both Autodesk's website and also include a link to a free course on Udemy created by Autodesk Education that explains how to use Fusion and I think is a great course for anyone who is new and wants to learn how to use it.
Once I designed the outer rim, I moved on to creating the profile which I would revolve, and then later use a boolean command to create the individual spokes. I'm not sure if this is the best or easiest way to go about creating the spokes. Like I said before, there's a lot of different ways you could go about the design, but to me, doing it this way seems pretty simple. I made some modifications to the original sketch to get the curvature of the spokes looking how I wanted it to. From there I added some bevels to the edges, then I began working on the center section. I wanted to design the hex piece so that it looks a bit like a brake rotor. To create the tire, I just made a simple sketch which I revolved around the wheel. Since I'm setting this car up for drifting, I'm going to print the tire using PLA plastic like I did on the wheels I'm using for the Firebird. So I'm not worrying about adding any tread detail or anything like that. I'm really liking how the wheel turned out. The design process was quite simple and didn't take too much time to complete. These wheels will look great on the car and will look even better after I get them painted. However, I think I might make the size just a little bit bigger for this body. After spraying several more coats of primer, the body is starting to look really smooth. Some of the details are starting to become a little bit faint, but with a little more work, the body will be ready for paint. I wanted to make a rear diffuser for the car. Usually I would make one using CAD software and then print it. However, I wanted to change things up a bit and use styrene to create the rear diffuser and a tailpipe piece as well. I don't have a lot of experience working with styrene, but it's something I'd like to do more of in the future. I started by sketching out some basic shapes that I would glue together to begin making the diffuser, slowly filing and sanding everything so that it fits and is symmetrical.
With the two outer halves now starting to look how I want them, I measured the space between them and cut a piece to fit that section. These two outer pieces will be how I attach the diffuser to the body, and will also add to the appearance as well. The tailpipe piece was very easy to make. I had some styrene tubing on hand that was the perfect size. I got a flat piece of styrene that I measured, cut, and used to glue the pipes onto. And I sanded the edges a bit to make it look like the backside of a muffler. I still have a bit more work to do on the diffuser, but I'm really liking how it's turning out. I'm also planning on making a front splitter piece for this car using styrene as well. I've also made some progress on the chassis that I'll be using with this body, as well as some work on a few other projects which I'll be showcasing in next week's video. But that is all for today's video, I hope you enjoyed it, thank you all for watching, a big welcome to all the new subscribers, and I'll see you next time.